I was never black enough to to be with the black people, and I was never white enough to be with the white like the white people. And because of that, I was always feeling slightly displaced. My name is Lauren Silver, and this is my story. I wanted to get on here. I know you guys know that I'm really open on my platform. Nothing here is gonna change right now. I'm just gonna be very frank and honest. Racism is alive. Everybody in our society right now is being affected by it, even white people. It is so important that white people speak up and that black people, we've been waiting for this stage. We've been waiting to be heard and we are finally here and we have to continue to speak up. So I'm trying to do my due diligence. I'm trying to play my part in making sure that the conversation stays alive and that we keep talking about it. So I wanted to get on here and just tell you my story. I was born in Miami, Florida. I lived there for several years and then I moved up to a, a little bit up north to a predominantly white area and neighborhood. Um, and I lived there my entire life. As a young kid, I didn't really understand or see racism in the way that I do and understand it now. I did though remember the effects that it had on my oldest sister, Brittany. She is like a beautiful black, she's darker than me. She's a black, beautiful woman who has blue eyes, like, like, like sea blue. And she has black features and has nappy hair. She used to, I remember she would get into some arguments with some neighbors that we had that lived um, a couple houses down and I believe that they had told her and told my parents that she had stole something like now more than ever before I can look back in retrospect and say like you know was it because she fit fit that profile of someone who who would steal I have memories small memories of those kinds of things I didn't really see it at the time growing up but looking back now and being able to recognize situations especially because I played soccer my entire life within my team settings I had a lot of teammates who were racist towards me who discriminated and stereotyped me because I lived in a predominantly white neighborhood and played on predominantly white teams I got it all the time because I was the black girl which is crazy because I'm I'm not the darkest I don't have the darkest complexion but but what does that mean to be the blackest girl on the team and, and why why does that even matter so I remember like even playing as far back as um, like very, very young, I used to play for a team called Team Boca. And there were a lot of girls on that team who were predominantly white. If you're watching this video, this isn't me trying to call you out. This is me trying to play my part in our society and make sure that my voice is heard and make sure that this conversation keeps going because this is not about me right now. Me telling my story is to help implement the things that and change that we need in this society right now so that we can get justice for the people that are suffering today, tomorrow, you know, in the weeks, the months, the years to come. I, I was definitely different. I was like, you know, I had a harsher tone. I had a stronger attitude, I guess. And that was always mistaken for being mean or rude or whatever, but it's really not. It's a part of me. It's a part of um, who I am. And it has not, not, not necessarily anything to do with my blackness, as maybe more so has to do with just my genes, my personality. But I remember getting bullied a lot there and then even moving up into college soccer you know my teammates i love them if they love me and you're watching this i hope that you can come from a place of love and just understand that i'm just trying to do my part but there's a lot of times where i felt you know discriminated against by my own teammates by my friends who you know would say like oh it's just a joke or like oh no like i didn't mean it like that or no 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 like you know you're different than them you know my, the way, the upbringing that I had, my mom is black. She's a black woman. My dad, he is white and he is a white man. So I am just as white as I am black and just as black as I am white. So when I meet people, I honestly feel like I could fit into any situation, but everybody has done a really good job of making me feel like an outcast. I was never black enough to, to be with the black people and I was never white enough to be with the white, like the white people. And because of that, I was always feeling slightly displaced. And it's a really terrible feeling as a kid growing up, not feeling or knowing who you can recognize with and who you can relate to. You know, everybody always asks me who my role model is. And I honestly grew up not having one because there was no one who was ever 
um, whoever looked like me, whoever expressed the things that and difficulties that I see on a day-to-day -day basis with being a mixed biracial child in America, I, I had no one really to look up to that was talking about these kinds of things that I would be going through on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, racism showed up very differently for me. And whether people realize it or not, you know, I had some teammates who would say to me, you know, is that your real hair? Like, is that your real hair? Can I touch it? You know, because my hair is curly and because it's nice, it can't be mine. You know, I had people who asked me, these are my real eyes if I was wearing contacts. Why? Because I can't have like these color eyes. Why not? Um, you know, I even had had inter interracial with with African um, African American community issues about the fact that I am so light. So because I'm so light, you know, I can't I can't be black. You know, I'd be called the white girl um, amongst the black people. You know, I, I would be called um, the white girl, and I would be scrutinized for the fact that of the texture of my hair. The texture of my hair is too nice. So like I can't be I can't be one of them. My eyes, my skin tone's too light. So like from both sides, I was getting the same argument about my hair, my eyes, my skin. But the two of them, although they were the same exact issues, hated me on the same exact issues. And so because of that, I'm isolated. It's to me, it's the craziest thing. And I just feel like it is so important to just keep this conversation going. I've had people text me, ask me, what can I do right now in this time? to make sure I'm doing my part, to make sure that I'm helping change the, you know, the, the community, the culture, our society as a whole. And I'm saying like, we just need to continue the conversation. We need to keep talking about it. And I need to do my part because I feel like it's unjust of me to not speak up and say anything. I have always been extremely transparent. I've always tried to provide a platform where everybody feels welcome and they can talk about anything to me they can dm me you can text me you can call me whatever um because i'm going to shoot it straight from the hip and i always do but i definitely have experienced racism all the time and if you think as you're watching this video if you think that i am speaking to you i am because in some way somehow you might have said a comment to me that has impacted my life and 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 affected the way that i see myself why can't i show up as myself and feel good as a woman in America? Why do I have to show up as, as, a, as a good enough mixed girl or a good enough black girl? You know, why can't I just be Lauren Silver, Low Silver, and show up and be authentic and be myself and just be a great woman who has, who has done a lot for myself? I have gotten myself through high school, okay? I went to college and graduated with a bachelor's at the University of Florida. I maintain amazing grades. I, gra I graduated and went and played overseas for the first time in my family. I'm the only person in my family who played at a division one level with a with a scholarship to play soccer and went on to play professionally for seven years and lived in several different countries, played in a World Cup last summer and has been sustaining an amazing business for the past, I want to say, eight months. Here I am having this conversation and all these things that I've I've done along the way. It's not that I've been the first black person in my family to go to college or the first black person um, to do any of these things. It's 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 just me. This is the first time in my family that Lauren Silver has has done these things, and I just want to feel recognized for being me, for being just as white and just as black as I am, and showing up as authentically as I can. So I. I just really want to be as raw as I can and I want you guys to know that um, I'm just trying to do my part with keeping this conversation alive. I hope all of you, if you have questions or you know, you don't know, you don't know how to feel about this, you don't know how to talk about it, like I, I hear you and I'm just going to tell you honestly, like it's your responsibility to have these conversations, it's your responsibility to feel uncomfortable. Because I have felt uncomfortable the majority of my life not knowing you know, where I fit in and why we have to work so much harder as a culture just to be still still underneath everybody else. If you're watching this and you're my friend, I hope that this speaks to you and I hope that this changed something for you moving forward. That's all I got. I appreciate you guys. This is a safe space, it's a non-judgmental space, so just know that I love you guys.